In this video tutorial, we are going to learn how to do basic data entry. In order to do a data entry in the Excel, the only thing that you need to start is to start typing. So how you can do a typing is basically choose either of the cells in which you want to type. So I'm choosing cell A1 and I'm typing, let's say this month, which is January. Now, in order to shift from the cell, and go from cell A1 to cell A2, you need to just press enter. If you want to shift from cell A1 to cell B1, press shift. So the idea here is that after you have typed the content, you can press shift to move from left to right, or you can press enter to move from top to bottom. So this is how you can do your basic data entry. Let's say if there is some mistake which you may have done in your text let's say instead of february the spelling that you have typed is february so if you want to correct the spelling you can do a couple of things one is you can see that february is visible here so you can check the spelling here and press enter either ways you can double click and move inside the cell and do the data entry Another approach which is a shortcut is just to press F2 so that you can go inside this cell. So I'm pressing F2 to move inside this cell in order to do any editing within the cell. So this is a very basic editing function. Now let's type name. Once we press enter, we go one cell down from cell number D2 to cell number D3. Now let us look at some other Excel functionalities. Let's go to column A1 and we see that it's January written in cell A1 and February written in cell A2. Why don't you choose these two cells and you will find at the right hand bottom corner a, a very slim plus sign. When it shows a plus sign, just please click on your mouse and drag it along till the very end. And you may find that all these months are filled automatically. So this is a very quick, uh, helpful tool provided by uh, uh, Microsoft Excel, whereby you may not have to type all these set of numbers and you can automatically fill this after filling the first or the second one. Likewise, let us try another option with numbers. Let's type one, let's type two, and let's select both of them. And again, we go back to the right hand bottom corner and we click here and drag it to the bottom and let us see what the results are. So it gets incremented by one. So uh, it gets automatically filled up. Likewise, let's say if we type three and let's say we type six and we choose these two, we'll find that in each cell, there's an increment of three. So this is how an autofill uh, functionality can be used in Excel. Now let us look at some text functionalities. Let us type the name David and we'll press enter. And I'll try to type David again in the next cell. And I'll start with D. Look at what happens here. The moment I type D, the other elements of this name essentially are prompted by Microsoft Excel. So this is an auto prompt intelligent feature provided by Microsoft Excel, which you can use uh, in order to make the most of it. Now let us move back and let me type David is awesome in Excel. So though the cell size is very small here, but it contains the full elements of the text. David is awesome in Excel. Now I'm moving from this cell, which is cell number D16 to cell number E16 now. And let me type ABC here. Now the moment I type ABC, you may see that, uh, or you may observe that the whole sentence David is awesome in Excel is now not visible. So, let us go back to cell D16 and look at its content. The content essentially remains the same. It's just that it is not visible because of the other text which is kept immediately next to the cell 
D16. So in this case, if you want to make this cell visible, you can go on the top between D and E. The moment it shows you both the columns are selected, just press a double click. And if you do a double click, you'll find that it automatically adjusts its width according to the largest cell. Here the largest cell is David is awesome in Excel. So it adjusts according to the largest cell size. You can also press your mouse and drag on left hand side or drag on the right hand side depending on how much width you want of the cell. So this is how you can play with Excel and uh, you can fit to the text. Now let us look at another situation. Let me type name and when I press enter it will go immediately below the cell on which the text was written. Okay, so it is cell D2 to D3. If I press shift, it goes from cell D2 to cell E2. Let me type email here. I'll press shift again so that I shift from cell number E2 to F2. Let me type date. And now what I will be doing is I'll be pressing enter. So please note the cell number on which it gets redirected. So you may have noted that it moves from cell number F2 to cell number D3. So if you're typing consecutively a text and then entering it, the Excel automatically identifies and moves to the respective uh, column of the first text. So this is how it, it would function. Now let us move on and look at other set of formats. Uh, let me type a, a date 9 slash 2000. 13. So it automatically identifies this as a date. So as you can see here, it is a date. Let me try and type some time 10 colon 00 enter. Note what happens is this is automatically identified as a time. So it says 10 a.m. If I wish to write 10 p.m. 10 colon 00 with the P and you may note that this automatically identifies as 10 p.m. Okay, so this is date and timing. Likewise, uh, if I write a number within a parenthesis, let's say bracket open and a 50 and a bracket close, this comes out to be minus 50. So Excel identifies these brackets as a negative number. Let us try and type a fraction. 2, let's say 2 and 1 quarter of 2. So this is basically 2.25 and let me press an enter. So when you see here you will find this is a fraction but when you look at what value it stores it's basically 2.25. Let me write a fraction and see what happens. That's it. Let us type 1 oblique 9. And this comes as 9th January. So uh, note that if you are typing these fractions, it is by default taken as a date. So in order to write a fraction, you will have to include 0 in front of that fraction and then type 1 by 8 or you know whichever fraction you are looking out for. Then it stores the fraction number in the final value.